And so I'm going to talk to you a little about Space Camp. I've uh, been there next year, uh, last year, going again this year. Uh, so Space Camp is for, uh, well, you could say it's for kids. You know, you have, uh, if you ask a kid what you want to become when you grow up, there'll be some that say policeman, some say firefighter, and there'll be those cool kids that say, I'm going to be an astronaut. So for those, you have a Space Camp where you can train as an astronaut and... Uh, yeah, just experience what it's be like uh, to be an astronaut. Uh, go back. So uh, it's not just for little kids, you know. You have 40 year old kids, 80 year old kids. If you dream about you want to become an astronaut at some point in your life, well, uh, you can also go to space camp as long as you still have that little kid buried somewhere deep inside of you. Uh, so it's at the uh, U.S. Space and Rocket Center. It's an awesome space museum, and you have lots of exhibits, and you have mock-up models of uh, space station, of uh, space shuttles. I know they're kind of going down now, but they also have the Orion capsule, and they're always uh, increasing what they're doing. Uh, one of the famous persons who has gone to uh, space camp is uh, Samantha Cristoforetti. She was 70 years old or something like that, and she went on an exchange program where she was uh, you know, studying, I don't know what she was doing, but she was already dreaming of becoming an astronaut. So she went, uh, she had the opportunity to go to space camp, and uh, yeah, we all know what became of her. Uh, there's a couple of famous people, like you have a whole wall of fame with uh, people that did not just come astronauts, but also uh, flight controllers. You had uh, famous rocket builders. Uh, there's a whole uh, bunch of things you can do. It's also a great team building uh, experience. So you get people from all over the world like me. You get thrown into a team with people you don't know or barely know. Uh, we were lucky, we were all space teams together, so we kind of met each other online or we kind of knew each other. But it's great to get to know and work together with people from all kinds of disciplines. Uh, most of these people are not science engineers uh, or something like that. And uh, they do that mostly through simulated space missions. So you get to experience uh, the real thing. Uh, the fun part, or one of the fun parts, and most of the adults sometimes skip it, is living in the habitat. So it kind of looks like a spaceship inside. So you have like the waste management, which is the space camp term for the toilet, by the way. And you have the uh, you have the cool rooms. You have like slanted walls, uh, curved, and uh, uh, you have big corridors. And you have like a life support system. That's probably the echo that was hidden behind that. But you know, it all kind of looks cool, like like you're on a spaceship. And you know, that's just your bedroom. So you can choose to go to a hotel if that's your kind of thing. I mean, they won't make your beds for you in the habitat. You have to do all that yourself. But it's really cool to be there, not just for the little kids, but I think the big kids get to enjoy that too. Uh, so it's at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. You can see it's, uh, it's predominantly a museum. So you can walk outside. They have rockets. They have space shuttles. Uh, also inside, they have all the museum stuff like uh, spacesuits like that, and uh, you have a big Saturn V in its entire length that you can you can uh, investigate. They have uh, lunar landers, uh, even a, a bigger and a better model than the one you see outside. Of course, they're not going to put a detailed one in the rain. Um, so you st you get all the positions, the ground as well as the space. So you have the, the yeah, before the mission starts, you get to choose a position. Like not everybody can fly the space shuttle. You have uh, you need the entire crew. So you have people on the ground who will do the mission control. And uh, here it's the Eurocom. There it's uh, the Capcom, uh, who speaks to the people on the shuttle, the, the ones that really fly. You have also the mission mission specialist. They just fly around. With the crew, then you have people, if it's a mission to the International Space Station, you have the scientists there who are doing their science stuff. And if you go to the moon, it's the same. You have people on the moon uh, that do their things. So, like I said, the ground crew, also uh, on the lunar base, you do experiments. You also have EVAs. So you get to put on the, the big bulky spacesuits with the, with the gloves and all the trouble that comes with it. They will host you into the air, so you're kind of dangling there. Uh, you need to speak to the guy on the ground if you want to go up or down. And you have to de disassemble things and try to put them back together, if you're lucky. Um, so on the spacecraft, you have pilots, commander, mission specialists, science. So you have the space shuttle, you have the Orion spacecraft, and they do several missions, they have short missions, they have long missions. Um, so 
Uh, there's, it starts with the training, so you have like the timeline that you have for the ISIS now. You also get your own timeline. You get all your manuals, all the stuff you got to do. Mostly it's uh, flipping switches, you know, uh, they, they, they kind of play it's real. So if the ISS is flying and it's going in the dark, then you get to turn off the solar panels, turn on the battery, all that kind of stuff. So it's really in immersive. So I have like all these buttons, they all work. They're not just there for for fun, so you have to do it in the right order. If you do it wrong, then the, the, they have some kind of, they call them the space ghosts, the people who operate the thing, and they, they just sit there, and uh, they'll tell you whether you've done it right or wrong, and sometimes you have to do it over again. Also, you have to be very careful. If you are on the ISS, then stuff floats away. So if you have your book, your manual, and you leave it there on the desk, then uh, the space ghost will come past, and suddenly the book won't be there anymore, and you have to go looking for it because stuff disappears in space. So I also have computers where you have to enter numbers or check numbers, or, uh, like everything's there, and you can see some kind of buttons, but it's really a lot of buttons, and uh, you can't memorize all of them, so you have to look in your book, and it says, oh, it's panel left seven, or left aft seven, that's in, in the back, and you have to go look for the panel, and then look for the button, and uh, it can get stressy, because the time lapse keeps continuing, I mean, the ship's not going to stop because you didn't push the button on time. Um, Okay, so uh, that's when everything goes right, but in the longer missions, stuff can also go wrong. So warning lines will pop up where, you know, it's not longer nominal. You have to look in the book what the warning is, and you can have severe warnings, and you can have little warnings, and sometimes you have to drop everything you're doing and address an even more severe warning than the one you already have. Um, so yeah, you have the warning lights, you have uh, values you have to monitor, like if you are the EECOM and you have to look whether there's enough, enough oxygen on the ship. And, you, know, you have to do the calculations because uh, every once in a while they have to switch out a, a canister with uh, fresh oxygen or for the CO2 scrubber you have to replace something. Um, and it might be that you try to contact mission control and nobody's saying anything because they just had a tornado warning so everybody run to the shelter, it's virtual of course. And um, yeah, in, uh, if I have, like, like for me, they, they asked me to, uh, to stand up in the middle of a flight and then uh, you know, you're experiencing 3G and then you're supposedly hit your head and uh, you need a nurse. So there's medical emergencies, uh, crew would fall out and if everything fails, uh, you know, then uh, you fly your shuttle into the ISS, it falls out of the sky, it lands right on mission control, and then uh, you have a bunch of dead people. But, uh, <laughs> it can also happen. Uh, so there's other activities. You have scuba diving, you can explore the museum, you have guided tours, you have a ropes course, you have a quiz night, IMAX movie, and an astronaut might pop up and give a speech, and you can meet him and have your picture taken. Uh, so other activities, uh, like in the real mission, we design our own patch, uh, so we do the zipline thing. You build a rocket, you get to launch the rocket, so uh, all that kind of stuff in there. They have astronaut training simulators, which you can do like lunar gravity walking, and uh, you can do the spinning thing, and also the, the chair, like in the, in the movie Gravity, you can also fly around in that. Uh, if you're a U.S. citizen, you can visit the NASA Marshall Space Center. It's right outdoor. I haven't been there, so I had to, luckily I had all my teammates uh, making, taking the pictures for me. Um, and then you have also Aviation Challenge. So if you're not so much into space, but you're into flying, then you can uh, fly the movie Top Gun. Uh, it's basically the same concept. You can sit on the plane and you can... Uh, yeah, also push the buttons and shoot other planes, and uh, it's cool for people that like uh, flying. So uh, that's Space Camp, and if you want to go, you just go to www.spacecamp.com, and uh, it's kind of expensive, but you get a whole lot of stuff, and it's really cool. Thank you. Yep. Any questions from the audience? Um, in Germany, there was just a movie on the television that was basically shot in, in, uh, um, in this camp. So it's really great to see these, uh, these images that you are showing because I recognize some of the scenes of the movie. So, uh, yeah, it's a good motivator to go there. My kids love the movie, so now I know that I should take them there and that they can enjoy it themselves. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, then uh, thank you, Wim.